Namaskaram everyone. Welcome to Hinduism Now Global Press updates for March 19th, 2022. So we have with us today a story coming from uh, news from a uh, ISKCON temple in Dhaka in Bangladesh, which was thrashed by a mob of 200, allegedly. And there's various uh, video evidences across the internet uh, documenting this. And so apparently the police didn't respond at that time. Three, at least three people were injured. And this mob of 200 had uh, thrashed the Ishkan temple. So of course we have the remembrance of the attacks um, a few months ago in uh, after uh, during Durga Puja and Navratri where thousands of Hindus were forced out of their homes in terror under the threat of murder rape and uh, worse many temples were destroyed many of that caught on video footage where mobs of terrorist activists were recorded moving throughout the villages from place to place apparently uh, destroying and uh, demolishing, raping and pillaging Hindus. So this is 2022. It's not 1971, it's 2022. Taking a look at this piece, Ishkan Temple in Dhaka vandalized three injured. A mob of over 200 people attacked devotees and vandalized the Ishkan Radhakanta Temple in Bangladesh's capital Dhaka on Thursday. Last evening, when devotees were preparing for Gora Purima celebration, a mob of 200 people entered the premises of Sri Radhakanta Temple in Dhaka and started vandalizing it. The vice president of Ishkan called Kata told ANI Radha Ramdas. Three of our devotees were injured. Fortunately, they called police and were able to drive away miscreants from the temple premises. 200. 200 miscreants. Mr. Das said that the attack is a matter of grave concern and appealed to the Bangladesh government to take stringent action and provide security to Hindu minorities in the country. This incident comes after a series of attacks on minority religious places in Bangladesh that took place last October. An Iskhan temple in Nokali city in Bangladesh was vandalized and a devotee was killed by a mob on October of six, October 16th. This report from NDTV. Is this, is this something that happens frequently? A mob of 200, just put in the comments, the places where you live, does this happen a lot? Mobs of 200 people go around killing people and destroying temples? The threat to kill people? Does this happen where you all live? Please let's just openly share where you live. What is the condition of your life? Does this openly happen where you are? Where mobs of 200 people gather during one of the biggest religious and uh, spiritual celebrations of, of any given religion, where a mob of 200 people go and destroy the temple and threaten the lives of the people. Does that happen where you're living? Please just share where you're living. It happens in Pakistan, right? It happens in Bangladesh. It happens in Pakistan to Hindus. It happens to Hindus in Bangladesh. Does this happen regularly where you are? Please share. If you live in France, Germany, Russia, China, Australia, Canada, North America, USA, wherever you live, Portugal, UK, does this happen a lot? If you're living in Africa, South America, please let's just get a let's get a thermometer on this thing. Does this happen a lot to people where mobs of 200 people target the biggest spiritual celebrations of the year for a religious group and go to their temple and destroy it? Does it in in Canada are you living with that threat? When your Easter celebrations come, are you in fear of a mob of 200 people coming and destroying your church? Is that happening in USA that you're afraid during Christmas 200 people are going to just randomly, spontaneously gather and come and assault the parishioners and destroy your church? Is that happening to you? 
And also, please, how many Hindus out there think this is normal and expected and usual? The Kashmir Files movie is playing now and it's obviously drawing a huge storm around it. People denying, did this happen? So there's quite a few different uh, news items that have come up. We'll see if we can just share one quickly. So let's just take a look. Everyone can decide. In some religions, when they get inspired, they start converting others. In some religions, when they get inspired, they start practicing terrorism. In Hinduism, if they get inspired, they start meditating to achieve enlightenment. I am Kashmiri Muslim. Our pundit sister, Girja Thaku, was cut into pieces while she was alive by militants from Kashmiri who had guns in their hands, all in the name of Azadi. This is fact and not propaganda. I fold my hands and apologize to Pandit Biradari. Kashmiri Hindus were offered three choices by extremists and they didn't pick up any weapons. Convert, leave or die. So be unapologetic unpolo towards your dharma. Protect yourself and read dharma grant books regularly. Here's two more commonly publicized incidents from the 1990 genocide of Hindus in Kashmir. Terrorists came looking for BK Ganju. He was hidden himself in a rice container. They found him and shot through the container and his wife was forced to eat the blood-soaked rice. And again, Girija Tiku, a government school teacher, she was gang raped, brutally tortured and ripped into several pieces using a mechanical chainsaw while she was alive. So Hindus, please commit to your dharma can it commit to Sanatana Hindu Dharma, not the violence? <laughs> commit to renouncing your violence and being an extremely <clears throat> contributing member of society as Hindus are statistically all around the world in every country. Even being a small percentage of the United States population, you have to check the statistics of possibly 1.3% are responsible for 10% of the startups, are the most educated, the most contributing members of society and the most non-violent. See the number of Hindus in prison around the world. Extremely low. So please commit to Sanatana Hindu Dharma. The only enlightenment civilization, the world's oldest, most successful living civilization. Please learn about it. Let us not think first. Let me have the criminally negligent, comfortable life. What kind of life are Hindus facing around the world? Is it a comfortable life? Let us not think first, let me have the criminally criminally negligent comfortable life of one li of one wife, two kids, two cars and a bank balance, not bothering about anything else. So this is happening on a daily basis. During Durga Puja, Navratri, Holi. So Hindus, what are you going to do about it? How long are you going to wait for this? Previously it was Afghanistan, then Pakistan, then Bangladesh. So where next? So how long will just sit and watch this happening to Hindus? What about all the gurus? What are all the people who sacrificed their lives as Hindus during the 1300 years of Hindu Holocaust? Targeting Hindus because you're a Hindu. See, you're a Hindu, right? Now. So as per reincarnation, what were you in a previous birth? If you had the guts or the blessing to be a Hindu now, after 1300 years of Hindu Holocaust, then you must have been a Hindu before a non-Hindu would not want to step into this. Only you had a connection with Dharma before. So who were those people who were murdered in Hindu Holocaust other than you? Who was it?
Do not think Hinduism is not in any imminent danger that we can protect it for the next generation. One of the worst things the criminally negligent Hindus tell us is they always think Hinduism will be protected by someone else. Who? Those people attacked by the mob of 200 yesterday during holy celebrations. When you, are cele when you go to celebrate um, Abhishekam or Puja or um, Purnami at your temple next time, today or tomorrow, are you expecting a mob to come and attack you and destroy your temple? That's what happened during Holi in Bangladesh here in Dhaka. And much worse during Durga Puja, Navratri. Those people had to leave their whole life forever. And who knows where they're living now, with nothing maybe, if they're alive still. Are you expecting your home to be destroyed because you're Hindu now? You better get ready for that. Pakistan gone, Afghanistan gone, Bangladesh gone. What direction is it moving? You're not protected by constitution. There's no Hindu constitution. You're secular only. By definition, if you're Hindu, it means you're secular. You cannot be, you're not allowed to be Hindu. To justify the criminal negligent, Hindus say, Sanatana Hindu Dharma can never be destroyed, except during Holi and Dhaka. The criminally negligent Hindu lifestyle is responsible for everything related to Hinduism getting wiped out. There's no point, if we're going to stop being Hindus, what's the point? Renounce ourselves to be secular, what's the point then? That doesn't give a life solution to your grandchildren. We really better start working together. We really start better start taking care of each other, build an ecosystem where at least we can live authentic principles of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. What good is 9 to 5 if it's the end? It's the tree that gave you the fruit called life. Learn to water the tree and keep it alive for the next generation to save the planet Earth and for your personal reasons. If you're seeing and hearing this news about the ISKCON temple, the Kashmir files, the Hindus being destroyed and just keeping quiet, eating your stuff and living that third-rate life outside of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. You're a criminal negligent Hindu and your son, the next generation, they're not going to be Hindu. If you're not living Hindu, see just look at your grandparents' generation, how they had Sanatana Hindu Dharma as a living experience for them. And look at you now, your children and grandchildren. Is it the same? No. Even anyone can wear dhoti or anywhere, let alone vibhuti or kumkum. How many, how many Hindus do you know wear kumkum and vibhuti? The saints, they say they're only afraid of one thing. Someone who doesn't have vibhuti on his forehead. If you're seeing and hearing this news and you're keeping quiet and just eating your stuff, you're a criminal, criminal, negligent Hindu, and your son, the next generation, they're not going to be Hindu. Why would they? With this example, why would they? Then how will they end up? What are the alternatives? Converting or terrorism? Not only that, why would we have the right that someone should carry your name? Why should someone carry your Hindu name in the future? You're going to lose it. That criminal negligent society of Hindus has no right to exist and no need. There's no right to a future. Hindus, it's not a call to violence, a call to non-violence. Renounce your own ignorance, your own fear, self-doubt and worry. All the gurus did. That's the only reason we know about Hinduism anymore today. Hindus start researching Ahimsa. You'll experience it in Puja and morning yoga during Brahma Mohorta. Learn to do the healing and share with people. 
Learn to get together, gather in study groups and start doing it. 9 to 5 for what and then what? A non-existent history of Hinduism for your grandchildren. Then what? You'll be sitting where? Who will be laughing at you? No one offering you the Shraddha. Who's going to offer you Shraddha? Nobody. Then what's the point? Commit to Ahimsa. Learn it. It means renouncing your lower identity. Tyaga. Renouncing your lower identity. Taking responsibility to enrich the lives of other Hindus and build the Hindu ecosystem. We don't need anything from anyone outside. We don't need to destroy anyone. All you need to do is revive the authentic original principles. Commit to it. You're dressing like Calvin Klein and who is those other people? Drake. 